All right, so here is a 27 Edo guitar. Um, Edo stands for equal divisions of the octave. Um, most instruments in the Western world are tuned to 12 equal divisions of the octave. So um, with 27 Edo, you have these tiny little quarter tone uh, steps that are about 44 cents each. Um, and 12, uh, 27 Edo just has a lot of great chords, um, a lot of harmonic potential, a lot of great melodic potential. And um, I'm just sort of discovering it um, as I go. I, I recently got this guitar and yeah, I just wanted to share um, some of the things I've found, give a quick tour of the guitar, and I'll talk about a, a few of the things that I did in that piece. Um, and hopefully it's of interest to some people. Um, if you're just getting into microtonality or if you if you haven't started yet, um, I will be talking about some things in terms of just intonation and the harmonic series. So if you don't know what that is, uh, look it up. It's definitely worth your while. Um, there's a lot of um, really cool things you can do with microtonality and um, understanding just intonation is, is a big part of that. So um, I'll be referring to some intervals in terms of ratios. Um, and whenever I'm talking about a ratio, I'm talking about things in terms of just intonation. And just intonation is a kind of um, when thing when an interval is just, it sounds a little bit more like fused together. It can sometimes sound more in tune, kind of in a new way. Um, that's sort of the gist of it. It's a little more complicated than that, but it's not too difficult to understand. So definitely, um, you know, look into that if you're interested in this stuff. So. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'll mostly, you know, be talking about chords and intervals, but um, I'll talk about some of the things in the piece too. So I'll start with the major chord, major triad. Uh, the major third is the tune the same as it is in 12 Edo. So not much to talk about there. That's the sound we're all used to hearing. The fifth or the perfect fifth is tuned uh, a little bit sharp. It's about nine cents. Uh, sharp in terms of just intonation. It's about seven cents sharper than we're used to. Um, but in voicings like this, sounds just fine to me. Um, lower voicings, sounds fine to me as well. Um, power chords, you are going to hear a little bit more of the roughness of the beating, especially if you're playing with, um, you know, distortion. I don't use a lot of power chords, so it hasn't been a big deal to me, but if that's important to you, I don't know if 27 is, is the best, but um, in voicings like this, sounds just fine, I think. All right, uh, minor triads. Um, there's This is a really cool thing about 27 Edo. You get two different types of minor triads that both sound great. So we're starting with the six to five minor third just a few cents away from just intonation. And then we have seven to six, which is almost dead on J-I. It's, uh, I think it's less than a cent away. And if you're new to just intonation, there's kind of like a buzzing, glowing quality to this interval, though, and to J-I intervals often. Um, that is really cool sounding, I think. So that's a sub minor triad, and then we have that, which is more of like a your kind of run of the mill minor triad, but it's actually tuned a little bit better. Uh, minor third is okay. Um, we also have a neutral third. Um, I don't think that sounds good, but um, in certain contexts. Um, it can sound really cool. So in the piece, I play this chord. So there's a major third, there's a minor third. We have that neutral third. And this is tuned really closely to a 16 to 13 J-I ratio. So, and one of the things that you know helps sometimes with these things is um, I think I think contrary motion can help uh, you know make some kind of wilder harmonies work. So for instance, this chord I have this resolving down to that, and then this moving up that little quarter step. So we have these going down, 
and this going up together. So things like that, contrary motion, good voice leading, I think can make a lot of this stuff work. Um, so that's worth looking into as well. I mean, that's kind of general composition stuff, but um, all right. So neutral thirds. Oh, well, one, one more instance of neutral of the neutral third, that opening chord in the piece. I have a neutral third there. There's a couple other notes in here that are kind of making this chord happen, but I'll talk about those in a second. And then I kind of resolve down to a minor sound. So this is kind of, sounds kind of neutral to me. And then into more minor territory. So yeah, neutral thirds are cool um, in this tuning. I was kind of surprised, honestly. I didn't think I would use them very much, but I really liked them on guitar, especially. Um, all right, tritone. Um, there's two types of tritones. This one is more of a um, JI seven to five tritone. And then we have this one, which to my ears sounds a little bit more like the one in 12 Edo. It's It sounds a little bit more like, I don't know, like it's kind of a Lydian sound. But we have this. So I, I find those really cool and really useful. Okay, so two types of tritones. Um, sixth, there's a, there's a lot of cool things going on with the sixth. So um, we got that very, very tiny minor sixth, I guess you could call it. Uh, you know, maybe melodically they're kind of useful. Um, this is kind of a, not kind of, it's, you know, the, the 12 Edo. Minor six, tuned to 800 cents. Uh, nothing much new to talk about there, but this one, this is tuned really, really closely to the 13 to eight, or the 13th harmonic. And uh, melodically, it can be really cool. Uh, in chords, let's see. Um, let's turn it got this glowing quality, which I think is really cool. Um, so yeah. yeah. You can kind of sell it with the whammy bar. Um, but yeah, 13 to 8 is, is really cool. It's like a neutral sixth, sort of, too. Alright, um, it's kind of a more traditional major six. Um, yeah, it's really nice in the context of a lot of chords. Um, this one is maybe more interesting. This one is tuned almost exactly to a 12 to 7 J.I. ratio, and it's like a wide sixth. Um, let's try it in a chord. shocked at like how many useful chords there are in this tuning. I mean that sounds weird but I feel like that's usable somewhere. Um, yeah so the 12 to 7 is cool. Um, sevenths. So we have this which is um, in, to my ears close enough to a harmonic seventh, uh, 7 to 4 ratio. So it works great in dominant seventh chords. Um, in minor seventh chords, sounds great. I'm using the seven to six minor third there. Let's uh, add a ninth. Oh, that's crazy. But actually kind of cool. Oh, it's a neutral ninth. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so harmonic seventh, 
sounds great. We have this, which is like a sharper minor seventh. I really like this one. There's something about the color of it that, I don't know, I really like it. I like, I think I like things sharp in general. Um, it's got a really interesting color. Um, so you got that kind of minor seventh sound, and then we got that kind of minor seventh sound. So I'm just shifting the third and the seventh up and down, just that. Which is kind of fun. Um, okay. Neutral seventh. So, um, kind of sounds like a, a major seventh a little bit, but not quite. Um, in the piece, I... Is that chord so so rather than the major seventh I got the neutral seventh and some of these chords if you just you know play with intention and sit on it it just it sounds right it sounds right to me I don't know maybe my ears are messed up but I think it sounds great Whammy bar helps sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, major sevenths. I think that's oh ninths. Um, so we have you know again this tiny little step um, minor ninth, if you want to call it that, or minor second. It's kind of more traditional minor seconds. Um, we have like a. This to me sounds like a neutral second, kind of like it does in 12 Edo. I don't know what scale that is. I'm just using uh, neutral seconds everywhere, but that sounds cool. And I, oh, I kind of was playing a chord with a neutral ninth in it too. Earlier, yeah. So, oh, and then major seconds. There's actually two different types. This one's a little flatter, a little darker. And then we have kind of a brighter one, a little sharper. I think that's closer to a seven to eight J ratio. I can't remember how close it is. But very cool, very useful. Um, yeah, all right, so, oh. One thing I, I did want to um, play for you, and maybe I'll end on this. Um, this chord that I play at the end, I'm not sure why this sounds good, or why this sounds good to me, um, but that you would sort of want to hear is, that's the perfect fifth right there, but for some reason, That just sounds like, I don't know, it sounds like something that I haven't really heard before and um, it's got kind of a mystery to it. And, um, it doesn't sound out of tune to me, it just sounds interesting. So, and I don't know, on paper, I don't know, somebody maybe in the comments you can tell me why I like this chord, <laughs> but I feel like something that's sort of tuned like that when you maybe want to hear a perfect fifth uh, to resolve to. You, you would kind of want to hear that. Um, and that's nice and pretty, but this is, I don't know, got something a little more interesting to my ears. So anyway, I, th this kind of thing, um, that's really why I'm interested in microtonality. I think there's just a lot of really cool new colors and chords and things that um, I haven't heard before and I haven't used before in my music. Um, and if you've heard any of my music, um, you might know that I, I don't usually go for the, the super dissonant um, stuff. Like, you know, that's, that's clearly a possibility when you're using microtones, but um, I'm really interested in finding the, I don't know, for lack of a better word, pretty sounding stuff or, you know, more like conventionally beautiful and, and not super dissonant. I think there's just a lot of interesting colors um, that are available in these tuning systems, not just 27 Edo. There's, you know, there's so many of them. Um, there's just like all of these worlds to explore. 
and I've just I've chosen 27 because I like it um, and you know theoretically it's pretty good on paper too so um, yeah if uh, any of this sounds good to you check it out on a um, you know like in the software realm um, I think it works great with a guitar timbre harp timbre like more acoustic timbres I think I think it works really well I haven't I don't think I've tried it on piano yet but um, also works great on you know synths too you know if you're doing kind of like electronic music um, yeah it's a fun tuning I think it's really versatile and um, lots to explore so I hope this has been uh, of interest to some of you and um, yeah if uh, anybody has any questions or um, if you want me to do a follow-up video if you want to hear anything else uh, let me know um, if it's uh, if it's past May 28th 2021 um, I have an album out called 2227, um, and I'm using this guitar a lot. Uh, I'm using some of my 22 guitars as well, hence the title 2227. Um, and it's, it's basically a guitar record, um, and I have quite a few pieces that, uh, yeah, are really just using this a lot, and, um, I plan to do more of that. So stay tuned for that if you're interested, and that's it. Thanks for listening.